What's up metalheads, welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial series where we're making metal materials. This time, let's get pitted. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and today we have part 2 of our metal tutorial series. Short series of 2 videos, 6 materials, and actually a lot more materials if you really pay attention along the way. You can create all sorts of stuff with what we're going to be doing. So if you did miss the last tutorial, um, for one, it's probably because you're not subscribed to me, so you should go ahead and subscribe now. And for two, we talked a lot about how I set up this interface. It took like four minutes to explain all that, so we're not going to explain it today. If you have questions about how the interface is set up, if you have questions about the lighting, the choices I've made here, who this woman is, your answers are all in the first tutorial. So especially if you're a beginner, I highly recommend you check that out or if you have any questions about this stuff. If I missed something in the first tutorial, feel free to leave a comment, but uh, again, I do encourage you to watch part one of this short tutorial series. So now, let's get started. I have my nymph preparing for the bath selected here, and I want to add a material. So I'm gonna press new right here, and that's gonna create a material. It always, for some reason, starts off to the side there, but that's okay, we are in a great mood today, and that does not bug us. Okay, so Shift S shader, principled shader. Uh, if you want to do Shift S, you need to have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. I'm going to say Node Wrangler add-on about a hundred more times, so go ahead and turn it on now. So we've got our principled shader here. As we've mentioned, we're making metal materials again. So I'm going to drag this metallic slider all the way up, and the material we're going to be making is somewhat of a pitted metal. Let's get pitted, bro. So I'm going to change that name to pitted because you should name your materials. Just do it. It'll be, your, your life will be easier. Just name your materials. You don't have to name it pitted. You could name it um, dotted or like speckled or you decide how to describe it. It doesn't matter to me. So I need a texture to make the pits. And the texture I'm going to use is a noise texture. That's what I always use. So you probably saw it coming. Here we got our noise texture. Now we want this noise texture to make like bumps. So we're going to add a shift a converter or sorry, vector bump. Drop that right there. That's going to go into the normal. The color of this noise texture is going to influence the height and nothing's happening. What's not happening? I think we need to change the scale. Yeah. Let's bring that scale up a little bit. So now we're starting to get what we want. And, um, it's not super obvious, but the texture, if we shift control click on this, is kind of getting stretched in a funky way. So I'm going to press control T and um, that's only able, you're only able to do that with the node wrangler add-on enabled. Node wrangler add-on, node wrangler add-on, turn it on. Okay, so we have the texture being applied with generated coordinates, but I want to use the object coordinate. So I'm going to drag that in there. And um, that's looking pretty good. Let's maybe bring the scale down a little bit. Let's maybe save our file like every three seconds because sometimes this is a little bit crashy and uh, let's put that all back together and now we have our um, like a crumpled up aluminum foil material if you wanted to make that you did not even know we were going to be going over it there it is enjoy it but that's not actually what we're going for we want the to make this pitted material we want the like the pits to be just every once in a while. We want like some here, some there, but not all over the place like this. So we need to have some more control over this noise texture. We're going to do that with a color ramp. So if I press shift A and add a converter color ramp, drop that in there, nothing's going to change because it's just uh, converting those colors to black and white, which is what the bump was already only looking for. So it's the same. So, um, Let's, let's click on this. And so I'm going to go and flip it around the other way because it's just going to be a little easier to uh, work with our roughness in a minute. But basically the gist of what this color ramp is doing is, is allowing us to kind of crush these values, give ourselves a little bit more contrast. And when we actually look at this as the bumpy material, we can see what's happening here. And these bumps do appear to be like diseased growths and I want them to be pits so I'm going to press invert to uh, to switch that around and so now you can see what's happening here we when we move these around we're just getting a little bit more control over what that bump is going to look like 
you know, so, so move these around, get them about how you like it. Something like that. I think it's going to work pretty well for me. So I'm going to leave it right there. Maybe bring the scale down just a little bit. So they're a little more sparse. It's a beautiful word sparse. So uh, when we pull this all back together, you can see now we have our somewhat pitted metal, but this really isn't what we're going for. What we want is, you know, we want this to look like it's old, like it's been accumulating some dirt and stuff like that. And so those pits will probably be filled with like, you know, darkness, dirt stuff. And so will these cracks and crevices. So let's go ahead and take care of the, the darkness in these pits here. Um, so the other thing is, if we look at this, let's take this roughness value all the way down and let's save again. Um, when we bring this roughness all the way down to one, or sorry, to zero, we've got like this mirror finish here which is great, but these pits and stuff here also have a mirror finish, and we don't want that. We, we want those to be, like if they had dirt in them, they wouldn't be super shiny, they'd be kind of rough. So we wanna use this same texture again to influence the roughness. So when I click and drag that in there, instead of just having the single value of zero, it's gonna now have um, values between you know one, and it's basically gonna be this. So um, again, I'm shift control left clicking on the color ramp with the node wrangler add-on, node wrangler add-on, node wrangler add-on enabled. And it's basically, so these areas are, these white areas are corresponding to a value of one, black to zero. So it's basically a value of zero, all in these black areas, white in the, um, one in the white areas. So that basically means with the roughness that we've got. And if we actually unplug this, we can see that a little better. So this is doing exactly what we want. We've got um, super rough in the pits and shiny on the outside, which is what we want, but we don't want it so shiny. So what I'm gonna do is actually, um, I'm gonna, um, I, I wanna bring these black, I don't, this black is making the mirror finish and I don't want that. So I need to bring that value up. So I'm just gonna do that with a math node and I'll leave it on add. And what that's basically gonna do is, so when you take zero plus 0.5, and then we have a roughness value of um, 0.5. So I don't want it to be quite like that. But in this, this white is already at one. I'm fine with these being totally rough in the pits. So I'm just leaving that, you know, obviously that that's technically would be like a value of 1.2, but roughness only works between zero and one. So basically what this math um, node, this add thing I just added is allowing us to control the roughness of the outside here. So I'm just going to set that to something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so now we have, it's a little shiny on the outside. It's a little bit rough in the pitted areas here. And the next thing I wanna do is actually influence the color here. So if I were to now use this same texture one more time and influence the color, let's do a shift A converter color ramp, drop that in here. And I'm just gonna use the noise texture from right here and then drag this into here, you'll see that now we have not what we want. So let's, let's we kind of need to, anytime you're working with textures, you gotta play around a lot to get this stuff right. So, so now we're getting, this is looking correct. I mean, really, we should line it up pretty much to what we have down there so that it's just appearing in the pits. And um, so now when we look at that, and let's actually, I'm sorry, let's let's get rid of that one. Let's just use this color ramp and plug that in there. And so now, okay, so now it's it's a little bit the opposite of what we want. So, but, so the reason I decided to go the other way here is um, I want this, I want these to line up perfectly. You know, where there's bumps, I want there to also be um, darker areas. So it's probably easiest to just use this same color ramp. So I'm gonna add, I'm still gonna add another one, but I'm gonna add it kind of after this. And so now when I flip this around, now we have black areas here and let's, uh, we can actually move these in pretty much right next to each other until, we, until we've got this looking right. So now we have, yeah, so now that's gonna be super dark in there. Okay, perfect. So now we have black areas where the pits are and it's and it's white on the top. But I don't want it to be totally white on the top and that's part of the reason we add the second color ramp. I want this metal to be a little bit more of like a gray. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring that value down a little bit. Maybe save again. Always a good idea. Um so yeah, we want this to be like a little bit of a gray on the outside. And then I don't want those 
pits to be totally black dirt. So I'm going to, let's just make that kind of like a, a really dark gray. So that's looking pretty good. Um, we're off to a decent start. This is cool. But if you recall, I mentioned one other thing. What I want to do is now also add some, um, you know, so not only would dirt be piling up in these little pits here, but they would actually be piling up in the, the cracks and stuff of, you know, like the folds of this cloth here and, you know, at the, at the knee here. So there's a, there's actually a node in Blender we can use to kind of automatically find those areas. And that's going to be the pointiness node. So we want to basically pull, we want to input info from this mesh. So that's why it's under the input tab here. And we're importing geometry data. So we're going to click that there. And, um, I'm going to, you can, you can preview what all these different ones do, but if we look down at the pointiness, um, it's a little bit hard to see, and that's why we're going to add another color ramp. Basically what we're doing, what this is doing is it's finding these, er these areas that are like cracks and crevices and then areas that are, that are flat. So in order to increase that contrast, we basically, we're, we're trying to create a map here. We want certain areas to be basically black and certain areas to be white. So I'm going to add a converter color ramp you should be a color ramp pro by the end of this tutorial so now when that's in there pull these together now we can start to see what this pointiness is really good for so basically we're just like creating like a mask here and i've decimated this mesh a few times so it's not super high resolution high poly um, so we're getting some kind of streakiness here but this works really good on like a nice high poly mesh so um, you may get different results depending on kind of what your model is here. But basically what this is doing is just creating, it's basically detecting where these cracks and crevices are. So, um, you know, all the cracks, sorry, that's so immature. All the cracks are black now. And what we've done is basically just create a mask, like I said. So right now when this is all plugged in, we just have this single color. And I like the color, I like the pits being the color they are, but I want these cracks and crevices to be a little bit like darker. So the way I'm going to do that is by adding a color hue saturation. And when I drop this in there, um, we can see basically what I'm going to do now with this is decide how dark I want those dark areas to be. And I want it to be pretty dark. So I'm going to, I'm going to make it, you know, I'm basically bringing down the value with this node to something really low. So that's what I want the dark areas to be and then you know if that had not been in there that's what the light area should be so now we basically need to tell blender to mix between those two you know and and that's why we created this point in that map you're going to see uh, where that comes into play right here so i'm going to add a shift a color i want to mix the colors together mix rgb drop that in there so now we have our darker color being mixed with our lighter color, which is going to be this one. So, you know, the darker color is feeding through this hue saturation value. The original color is feeding straight into it. And now the way this mix works is basically if it's at zero, it's the first value. If it's at one, it's the second value. And this is the same principle we had down here where white is equal to one, black is equal to zero. So when we plug this in, black being zero, these cracks are going to be the first value here. So that's the darker one. So when we plug this in, we will see it here. Now we can see we've still got our little um, pits and stuff in the darker areas, but this is our new color map basically. So when we put all this together, we now have these cracks and crevices getting this darker, um, you know, lower value color and the surface is keeping its original um, original value that we had set up. So again, if we look at this, this is what it was originally. Just going straight in there now. You know, take a, take a look at the folds and stuff here and these cracks and crevices. And then when we have it all mixed together like this, that's what we're working with. So you can tell it's quite a bit. Um, it really, you know, it's subtle, but it really does add quite a bit to the realism of the material here. So now in beautiful 1080p, just like the last tutorial, you will see a um, render of what this material looks like. So you can kind of take a closer look at it and see what's going on here. Um, the values that I've set up here should be pretty close to what you're seeing in the preview. But again, um, mess with these as much as you want. 
don't copy anything exactly, you know, make it your own. And um, yeah, so that's our pitted metal material. And now for the next material, we're actually going to use this one almost exactly the way it is, but I want to show you some of, you know, just really how versatile these procedural materials are. So what I'm going to do is press this little plus sign and that's going to create a duplicate and I'm going to name this um, copper. And what this is going to be is like a super messed up, like really old copper material. And believe it or not, all we're going to do for this is just move a couple of these little sliders around here. I'm uh, pressing C to circle select, which by the way, you can use a lot of the same like selection tools that you would in object mode to um, move things around in the, node ed in the node editor. Pardon me. So now, to make that material, as you saw in the intro, we are going to basically, for one, we want this to be like crazy more rough. So I'm going back here to my main texture that all this stuff is feeding into. And I'm basically just pulling, instead of this being mostly flat, it's going to be mostly pitted. So we're just moving these apart like crazy far. And that's immediately giving us, again, I mentioned, you know, you can basically create hundreds of different materials using the same technique, but pulling that apart, looking cool. And now um, I want to also influence the color here. So instead of just leaving it black and white, let's get a little bit creative. So let's make a, um, let's kind of pick a copper, copper color here. So something, you know, whatever color copper is, you could do gold, something like that. Let's maybe make that desaturated, bring up the value, maybe bring that a little more towards red. Yeah, just find your, uh, find your nice copper color. So that looks pretty good to me. Then let's also make this, instead of being just a dark, let's make it like a green. Like I think something about the, something about the chemicals, something about the science means, means that uh, copper is like a dark green. So yeah, dark, let's turn this value way down. Maybe the saturation too. And you could, I mean, you could make this like freaking pink crazy if you wanted to, obviously, but I want to, um, I want to make it sort of realistic. So now we have like this mossy degraded copper. I think it's like the Statue of Liberty in the United States, I believe is, is copper. And that's why it's like green, something about the way it's faded. I don't know. One of you guys with science skills, leave some comments down below and educate us all. So yeah, this, that's the second material we spent forever on the first one, but I just want to show you guys just, it's so versatile. You can really, you can just move all these things around, do whatever you want. And you can come up with um, some very unique materials, just just moving just a few things around. Um, so yeah, that's it for this one. Now, in the next part, which first go ahead and appreciate the beautiful full screen degraded copper. It almost looks like it's from like a like a sunken ship or something like that. It's got like moss growing on it. So anyways, that's it for those two materials. Thank you guys for watching. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to be going over the rust material. I was initially going to put it in here, but it's just getting a little bit too long, and I figured you guys would want more uh, sectioned up content so you could get right to what you wanted to see. So subscribe to my channel, stay on the lookout for that, and I'll see you next time.